Hi, welcome to the Mentored Engineer. In this video, I want to share with you one of my favorite resources for engineering. All right, so here it is. This is one of the three books that I brought into my, the PE test when I took it. It is uh, Omer Blodgett's uh, Design of Weldments. Uh, it's published by Lincoln Electric. Uh, they are just a uh, powerhouse in the industry of mechanical uh, research and uh, weld technology. Um, and I must say that I am excited that I am the proud owner of this one, which is other, Omer's other book, uh, The Design of Welded Structures. And I actually got this one uh, autographed uh, shortly before his death. All right, anyway, got that out of the way. I'm so proud of that one. Anyway, this book is a magnificent resource. There are three sections in here that uh, make the book well worth having. Uh, if you are a young engineer, this is a great resource because it is very easy to understand. It's written in simple terms. It's not very complex. Uh, the information is concise and to the point, and you can pick it up and pretty much get uh, the gist of what you need to do uh, very quickly. All right, and I want to go through a couple of the sections here just to show you exactly why I like this resource. All right, so uh, the first part of the book here, this section, is uh, on just the generals of stress and strain. They got tension, compression, uh, and shear, and go through just the, uh, the basics there. So it's pretty much like your textbook. Um, very good resource. Uh, no, oops. This first section here is section 2.8, where we start talking about uh, curved beams. And curved beams behave differently uh, than just uh, straight beams, so we need to make uh, certain stress uh, concentration uh, corrections for it. And he goes through the whole process of uh, what are the important radiuses, uh, how to uh, calculate your inner and outer stress, and then he gives accounts for uh, different uh, cross sections as far as uh, where uh, where you need to uh, get certain numbers from. Uh, very easy to understand. Uh, it's very clear and concise. All right, this here is the buckling of plates section. Uh, funny story about this: when I was interviewing for my previous job, uh, the engineering manager. Um, I'm a big fan of this book, didn't know it at the time, and he asked me in the interview, uh, what is your, uh, where would you go to for buckling um, information? And uh, I started thinking, and I said, well, my first go-to would be uh, Blodgett's, and then I'd probably choose the Mark's uh, handbook, and then uh, Roark's uh, Stress and Strain. And uh, I said, Blodgett's, and he goes, oh yeah, Blodgett's, that's the best one. All right, so you have it from him, the best one right here. Um, so it, it goes through uh, standard buckling of plates, which would be very similar to what you have experienced in uh, uh, your college classes. But then it takes it uh, a step further, and you start to look at um, uh, what happens when the edges are supported along it. So uh, if you were looking at the bottom side of a tube, you would look at the support of both edges here, and you could start figuring out uh, how much load could that take until the entire section uh, compresses? Uh, or in a different way, we, uh, we learn how to uh, use only part of that section in our buckling calculation. All right, so this whole table right here uh, will tell you exactly how to uh, use supported edges in, in your calculations here. Uh, you then go on to uh, what happens if you have uh, either localized buckling or you have uh, shear buckling here. So this section is one of the three sections that I would say it's worth your money here. That's where you're gonna get your money's worth. All right, moving on, uh, designing for torsional loading. Torsional loading is uh, a critical thing. So, and torsional loading is fairly easy to understand when you have closed sections. And a closed section is a section where there's very few holes and it's basically like a tube uh, or a pipe where there's a well-defined path for the stress to flow in as it circles the length of the pipe. So if you imagine uh, shear stress acting like uh, it was making a candy cane stripe along the section, that's what we're talking about here. That 
entirely changes when you have an open section. And generally speaking, open sections, they're going to deflect a lot more. So your stress is going to be lower than your deflection. So you really care about deflection when you get to open sections, hence this chapter. So uh, Blodgett here, um, he will go through and uh, introduce a system called uh, torsional resistance. And basically that, what that is, is he specifies a bunch of sections here and gives how much they're going to uh, rotate as you apply torsion to them. And he gives a method for taking complex shapes like this I-beam and adding different sections together to get your torsional resistance. And he's got some uh, tests that he's done to prove it. And it's a pretty cool uh, reference here as to how to do that because we want to keep our rotation small as engineers. We don't want this uh, you know, twisting around a couple times as we apply the load. Um, and he gives some advice and works some example problems. So that is section two of why I would definitely recommend this book for any young engineer. All right, the last section here is the creme de la creme. All right, this is the beam calculation uh, section. And this basically gives you a whole bunch of um, sections, or different uh, beam types, excuse me, and different loads. And we'll go through and we can calculate all these. So we've got cantilevered beams, simply supported beams, fixed beams, uh, beams with overhangs, uh, beams with uh, more than two supports. And then uh, point loads, uniform loads, uh, segmented distribution loads, and varying loads, as well as moments. So all these have different combinations. Uh, some of them have multiple per. And then uh, you look up, uh, you know, your three, you know, case three B here, and then you find it in in the section here. And here's three B. Three B has a, uh, a simply supported load with a constant distribution over it, and it gives you the supports at each end, the moment along the length of the beam, uh, your shear stress at any point, uh, your maximum deflection and moment, and uh, in this case it gives you the, the um, angle that uh, the ends will deflect. So a lot of information for every case. Now. I have taken, taken this information here for all these cases and put it into my ultimate beam calculator. So I encourage you to go ahead and check that out. All right, and this, this whole book, it's invaluable. Um, they're fairly inexpensive and you can probably get your boss to buy you one, okay? All right, don't tell him I said that, but you can get them to buy it for you. All right, so I have this as a reference on my website and I encourage you to go look it up. Uh, mentorengineer.com slash resources.